You know, I played sports my whole youth, and you're always taught you play until the whistle blows. Football or basketball, if you stop before the whistle blows, the other team is going to gain an advantage. They're going to keep playing, and you stop, and they have an advantage over you. So your coaches teach you your entire career. You do not stop until you hear that whistle blow. You keep playing. Hi, I'm Shauna, and this is my husband, Pete, and here with is little Anna. She's not feeling good. No. She got some shots today. Yeah. Uh, we are Golly Family Discipleship, and we disciple our family simply by reading the Bible. Uh, we're ordained ministers with the Church of God, so we just thought, hey, let's take to social media and let's just share the Bible and study the Bible with everyone out there. Hopefully, this will encourage you to disciple your family and will help you in your, your discipleship process also. This week, we are on chapter 2 of the book of Colossians. Last week, we did chapter 1, and... Um, we are going to continue on our Colossians study, and we are actually on verses 1 through 5 today. So I'm going to read those, and then we'll get started. It says, I want you to know um, how hard I am contending for you, and for those at Laodicea, and for all who have not met me personally. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full richness of of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So the Apostle Paul here says that he is contending for these individuals. You know, whenever I read this scripture, I thought, you know, the modern church has lost the art of contending for things. You know, uh, we've lost the art of playing until the whistle blows, or should I say praying until the whistle blows, right? Sure. And, and not giving in and holding steadfast and uh, grabbing the horns of the altar and saying, I'm not leaving until we get the breakthrough or until the person we're praying for gets the breakthrough. Uh, we live in an age of instant gratification. If it doesn't happen right now, then we lose attention span and we move on. We've been spoiled. We have drive throughs We have microwaves. We have uh, next day delivery. Uh, and Amazon. And right. it's standard. Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's like the standard way of living. We have in the internet where information comes and pops up and we know exactly what the recipe is or uh, you know what the 16th president's favorite meal was just because we google it or something so we have this instant gratification and we don't have what it takes necessarily to endure uh, to make sure that we see the victory you know the old saints used to call it praying someone through That's true. and what praying someone through meant was once you start praying you didn't stop until they got to the other side, until they got their breakthrough. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just uh, mentioning, hey, uh, their name in prayer, Lord bless so-and-so. Or it wasn't clicking the like button whenever someone says need prayers. Or it wasn't putting on there typing, praying, even though you know you're probably not going to pray for that individual when you type it on there. But that's what our modern church has turned into. We've, we've lost this ability to contend, or what we would call intercede on others' behalf. And that intercessory prayer is such an important part of every believer's life. We should be interceding like the Paul, contending for those to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, for them to grow in their relationship with him, for them to lead others into relationship with Jesus Christ. And our, our prayer life should be committed and dedicated and contending for those individuals. You know, this wasn't just about, this wasn't about like, oh, someone's sick. This, this wasn't about, oh, someone has an urgent need of finances. Oh, this wasn't about, oh, we need this person released from prison or we need the judge's favor. This was, this was what Paul knew <coughs> was important, was an understanding and a wisdom and a, a growth in their relationship with Jesus Christ. He was contending for them to have a solid and strong relationship so that they would be saved. Right. Because salvation is so very important. And, uh, you know, I've heard ministers talk about, hey, you know, it's, it's really wonderful that we want to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. But... But our first concern should be, hey, does this person have a relationship with Jesus Christ? You know, they need a healing of their soul more than they need a healing of their body. 
Right. He said he wanted them to understand the mystery of God, namely Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. You know, we need to be spending more time on our knees and less time on, in front of the TV, on Facebook, or doing whatever we might do. But we need to be praying until the whistle blows, right? Don't give up until the answer comes through. Don't give up until God says, okay, that's enough. It's over. We need to be contending for those around us. Uh, so going forward, remember there's four things we believe a disciple of Jesus Christ will do every day. We believe you'll wake up and you'll encounter God. You'll exalt God. You'll edify yourself by reading the Word of God, and you will engage this world for Jesus Christ. That's right. Until next time, may God bless you.